I'd like to welcome back to the stage Les Klinger uh, to present the 2022 Grandmaster Award. So all the objective facts about Lori you'll find in the program. I don't, I'm not going to read you her biography or anything like that. You can, you can read what I wrote there. Um, I, I want to tell you a few stories, not very many, a few stories about Lori. We met close to 20 years ago, and um, we met at a, a BoucherCon. I saw that she was on the program. I was a brand new writer of things about Sherlock Holmes, and I decided that I needed to go meet her. So I went across the convention and went to where she was speaking and introduced myself to her, said, you know, we ought to know each other. And she said something that forever <laughs> endeared me to her. She said, oh, I have your books. <laughs> what more could you ask? So I want to talk a little bit about Lori's heart. She has always been the most incredibly supportive writer for other writers. Early on, we started getting paired up on panels. Uh, she calls it the Les and Laurie show. I always knew that it was the Laurie and Les show. I learned that lesson the first time I went to Poison Pen. Uh, there were 80 people in the audience, and this was wonderful. This is my first time ever doing a book appearance. And I thought, this is great. So the next year, I went back by myself, and there were four people. <laughs> so yes, this is when I got it. But Lori has always been that, has exhibited that kind of generosity to other writers, to support them, to get out there and help them with their careers, whether it's appearances, whether it's reading their material, or MWA. She even appeared once with me. We, were doing, we did an event on my Lovecraft book. Lori knew nothing about H.P. Lovecraft, but she was willing to sit there on the stage and indulge me in a conversation about Lovecraft. So that's real friendship. Uh, Lori has worked hard over the years for MWA. She has mentored writers, she's been the chair of the publication committee, and supported other writers in doing that. She was the NorCal chapter president, so she has always believed in giving back to the community. Uh, when I first met her, of course, she was a, a hot controversy. She dared to marry off Sherlock Holmes, uh, but Soon enough, I and many other readers found out that she wasn't just going for cheap thrills. She was actually a great writer. So it's so fitting that we honor her tonight for her body of work and for, as it says in the program, the whole package. Uh, I encourage Lori to tell a few personal things tonight and to maybe let down her hair a little bit, and you'll see the results in a minute. Lori. Oh, I forgot to say, I want to clarify, notwithstanding how we've been introduced several times, we are not married. Slippery. Thank you. Thank you, Les. Um, yes, the Les and Laurie show on the road is a great fun. Um, yeah, for those of you who don't um, recognize me and who walk past me in the hallway, that's okay. Yeah, I normally am all up here. So, although I was remembering that when I, um, when I won my Edgar um, in 1994, I also had my hair down. So clearly this is, this is a theme. So. Um, I have been thinking, and I, and I realize it's a sort of theme that's, that's come out tonight. I've been thinking a lot about community recently, partly because it's because we've now started seeing each other in 3D again. Um, and we had the first Left Coast Crime, and I had uh, Malice Domestic last week. And it was, it was scary and exciting and, and nurturing to be among people again. Um, one of the things that we did at Malice that I, that I adored doing 
was one of their um, ghosts of honor, as it were, was Ruth Cavan. And those of you who have been in publishing for a while will remember Ruth, yeah. Um, she, she, was, she was a blessing to the publishing world. I joined MWA in 1993, the year that my first book was published, and I was thrilled because I could join. I could be an active status member. I was a, I was a real writer. Um, 1993 was the year that Margaret Marin won Best Novel for Bootlegger's Daughter. Uh, Michael Connolly was introduced with The Black Echo. And Dana Stabenow uh, published the paperback original, um, A Cold Day for Murder. And I remember reading these, the, about these in, in the third degree and being in awe of these people and these photographs of people with awards and Dana Stabenow's hair like this. And, and, and the next year I came back as a nominee and I, and I got to take one of these home. So I, over that period of, of 12 months, um, I, I met people who became my friends and my colleagues and, and my teachers. Um, I, after that, joined a number of committees. I was on uh, several of the judging committees, which is a fascinating project, and I don't want to volunteer for it right now. Um, I, I had a couple of other nominations for Edgars, and it's a huge honor to be nominated, even if you don't win. And having, having had more experience with nominations than winning, I can say it's really good. Um, and I also was, was very honored to serve on the board, the National Board and the NorCal Board. I made good friends. I saw how things could work in a, com in a company of friends. And, um, and I was utterly and utterly unprepared for the phone call that came in December that said I was going to be the Grand Master. And my, <laughs> my reaction was, me? <laughs> Which, which I think is a fairly common reaction. May, may, maybe not among the guys, but, <laughs> but, I, but I think an awful lot of women, when you say, you've won an award, they say, why? Um, because there's this, you, you never quite shake this imposter syndrome, do you? Um, I mean, I'm standing up here and thinking, yeah, well, how did I pull this one off? Um, but, you know, I have to say that I, I have a lot of experience with the imposter syndrome. My, my husband was an academic. He was a world-known academic in a rather narrow area. But his colleagues, his friends and colleagues, were um, regis professors and archbishops and heads of departments around the world. So he was, he was a real academic. And when I finished my degrees, in, um, I did a master's degree, it was fairly obvious that I wasn't going on to do a PhD and to become a royal academic. And I started writing. So about my third or fourth book, I was working on one that was about a holy fool set in, in California. And I gave it to Noel to read, and he, he made remarks and gave it back to me. Um, he was very polite about novels, but he didn't really get them. He, he didn't really, he, he sort of, I, I remember his reaction to the satanic verses, Salman Rushdie's book, was, I don't think a person could survive falling out of an airplane, could they? <laughs> <laughs> so, so shortly after Noel had read this manuscript and made his dutiful comments, he had a, a group of students who were up in San Francisco and they were forming a community of service. They were giving a, you know, a soup kitchen and that sort of thing. And they were talking to him about what they should name themselves. So they were thinking of the Brotherhood of St. Francis, it being San Francisco, or the Fools for Christ's Sake, which is a, <laughs> which is a, a, an evocation of, um, of Christian um, attitude and, and um, service. Oh, no, says, that's quite interesting. My wife has just written a book about a, the modern fool's movement that started in, in L.A. 
Oh, they said, pray tell. So he came home and he said, sweetheart, would you give me a bibliography on the fool's movement? <laughs> I made it all up. <laughs> and, and it sort of seems to me that, yeah, that's an imposter. But if, you, if you're a good enough imposter to put it over on somebody who's an expert in that particular field, <laughs> you know, that's pretty good. So, so yeah, I, I felt like an imposter when Greg called. Because any place that, it, you know, you're on a list that started with Agatha Christie and hits all the high points of the late 20th century, of course you feel like an imposter. But I'm also a member of this community. And I know that the name on the cover of the book, just like the person who's standing on the stage, is only the tip of an iceberg. That any, any book is a community effort. So as the person on the stage at the moment, um, I want to say thanks to those of you who put me here. Um, my, my present agents, Alex Shane and Mary Alice Keir and Anna Cottle, um, keep, keep, me, keep me moving forward. Uh, my former agents, Zoe Quinton, and the indomitable uh, Linda Allen, who is the first person who took me seriously as a writer. Why, I don't know, but she did. In the same way, editors. I mean, each editor I've had has been a, a point person, but they are also representative of an entire house. So that when I say thank you to Hillary Tiemann, what I mean is thank you to all of the different departments, the marketing, the publicity, the art department that does the covers, the shipping department, the, the mail room that occasionally gets the mail delivered. Um, I, I am very aware that this is a, a, huge, a huge industry and I am just one little person there. Um, my previous editor was Kate Misiak, my beloved K Kate Misiak, who many of you know. Yes, yes, let us root for, for Kate Misiak. And then, to circle around again as a good storyteller should, Ruth Cavan, my first editor. So thanks to them, thanks to them all, thanks to the mystery writing community, thanks to the 2021 board that voted for me and for Marjorie and Greg, who supported me so much. And I thank you, my friends and colleagues. Thank you.